morning, Saturday, cold, uh, four degrees and rising. Um, what are we looking to do? Oh, we are looking to do a quick bit of close up on this guitar. So we've got Stuart's US Strat, and uh, is it yes? I think it's US. Yeah, it's US Strat, and it's in for um, it's in for a couple of little things. It's in for new brass saddles, um, a new neck plate with fender on it, uh, and a couple of things: new strings um, and a tremolo setup. And basically, a kind of an overall setup. But the action was originally he felt it was nice the way it was. So we'll we'll see. Um, but we're, hopefully, we're kind of anticipating not doing a, a fret leveling on this. We think it's going to be good enough. Um, but there's a few steps to take. So I'm going to do a couple of close-ups as I like to do. So let's just get shooting away. Close up. Um, first thing I will note close-ups is I have taken the tremolo arm out and it's had some PTFE tape on it uh, in order to make it fit better so we may have to do a similar thing maybe a shrink wrap so that's the first thing it's not a, a flush or a tight fitting tremolo arm in there but that's not unusual it's not unusual anyway so we have here uh, I don't know what this is, Sonic? No, no, a light blue. It's a very, very light blue, eggshell blue type of, don't know what the correct color is. Um, finish, very nice. Um, everything kind of as you would expect. Uh, Stuart's upgraded the tuners already to the locking versions of these tuners, so um, part of our kind of trade off is I get the old ones, which is great because I've got a, another strap coming up. So everything else so far about this is looking cool and we're going to take these Northwest Guitars sourced brass um, replacements for these coil things, split things, and Stuart offered me these but I've got so many sets of those that I don't really need any more. Um, we're going to take this plain plate and we're going to replace it with the um, Fender Corona style plate and um, down here we've got standard um, back plate, a full weight block in there which is good, um, nice satin finished neck and uh, the new locking tuners on the back there. So nice overall nice guitar, we were discussing it this morning and, and Stuart's kind of like me, I think down the line I think that will get replaced for a Seymour Duncan, um, anyway because he's a, he's a sort of humbucker in the in the bridge man. Um, the thing I am slightly concerned about is the depth of these nut slots and I think we need to widen these to get this right. So that's enough close-ups for now on this baby. Kills it, switches it off, that up, gets hold of the thing and switches this bit off hopefully. Oh no I have, I have to move this out of the way and actually switch it off. Thank you. Cool. Right so we're back to normal. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to first of all put this into hardtail mode. That's the first thing before I do anything else. We've got a set of another set of hybrid strings here. Only Stuart broke <laughs> one of the high E's first time around uh, using the locking tuners. So we've found a spare, -da, so we can we can use the set. Um, so I'm going to find a screwdriver and we're going to remove the, the uh, back plate and we're going to lock the thing down into hardtail mode first before we do a basic action check and set. So Stuart wants this, um, this to float in the sort of conventional uh, conventional mode, so that involves using the Fridua method, as I always do, to set the correct range, but in the, in the awareness that the correct range method doesn't really take care of the change in the ac action that occurs. So we're going to have to do what I do, which is set it up half a mil lower and then we know that about half a millimeter in the typical setup 
half a millimeter will come back in when the thing floats. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set this to uh, lock down. Um, and the thing about these, which I muchly dislike, I've got the wrong screwdriver bit in there, is that these are never um, directly accessible, not easily accessible over the top of these little claws, so that it's kind of almost inevitable that you end up with ragged slots in the screws, um, simply because with the claw here, you can't get the screwdriver over the top of it, which I think is a damn stupid set, state of affairs. But that's how it is, unfortunately. Let's bring out the wider, bigger tip. But I'm trying to get the least amount of movements. I'm using a fair bit of downward pressing force. Um, it's only because this thing doesn't just cannot get directly into the head of the screw properly. The only way you could do it would be to redesign this. It's a slightly annoying state of affairs. Now we want the thing locked down anyway um, when it comes to uh, setting the tremolo. So the further we put it in right now, the better. Um, I've been tempted in the past to Good morning. I've been tempted in the past to cut off two of these uh, little tags here um, <laughs> because uh, to give myself some access, but even that isn't really going to work. I'm going to close the door, Morris. You're cold and you're wet. I'm wet. No, I'm cold. A good day. We've already been up for a while. You can stay in here. You're welcome to stay in here, but you're going to have to get off here. So let's take you, let's take you off. There's a good boy. Oh, you've been in the long grass. You are mucky. There's a good boy. Go down. Hurrah. Stay down, please. Um. Oh, yikes. What did you just do? You tipped over a box, didn't you? Yes. Come on, down you go. Come and have a stool by the warm fire. There, look, it's lovely and warm. Morris, Morris, go on here. Morris, Morris, go on here. Look, if you go on here, you'll see that it's lovely and warm. Mm. There, just stay there. Okay. No, <laughs> don't be so loving and friendly, please. So you can hear it scraping against these tangs. That's the screwdriver, I mean. Sweetie, come on, we need to get you off here because you are both wet and over needy. So stay there, there's a good boy. Or down there, one of the three. So, going pretty much all the way in with these to get this flat. Um, right, <laughs> this is getting too much. Park, you need to come down. Come on, come on. You're very sweet. I love you and all of that, but I do need you off here. I need to get on with this. I've got too much to do this weekend. Come on, come on. Come on. Purrings. So why don't you want to settle down by this lovely, lovely warm, you know, look, lovely warm fire heater. It's got your name written all over it. Long grass boy, come on. There, look. Make a little nest there and settle down. Yeah, you want to, you know you want to. Isn't it lovely and warm? God, I would if I could. Um, just noticing something on this here guitar. No, Morris. No, Morris, please. Right, I'm just going to, I won't pause, but we'll just let him settle down a minute. Something I noticed on this guitar. That's it. Go and find your place by the door. 
Um, not seen this before. Look at this. That's odd. It's all flaking off in here. Um, not seen that happen before. Uh, it, it appears to me what what it looks like is that they've clear clear coated under here and sprayed on top of some sort of clear coat, but and it's not adhered properly. Um, that's a bit. Oh my god, it's a bit on the worrying side. I've never seen that before. Well, we're going to take the neck off in a minute. Come on, Morris, I need you down, boy. Um, we're going to take the neck off in a minute anyway, so we shall see whether. That's it, go by the door and settle down. You know how it works. Right, um, yeah, I, probably worth a bit of a close up actually for all that hassle it involves. Sorry about this, boring, I know. Puts it in the center, presses the on button. I know it's a load of hassle, right, but I quite, don't bother me. I love it, really. Connect. Um, yeah, just get an opinion on this, really. Come on, you are connected. Yeah. No Osmo found. Oh, you have. Come on, you have. There you have. Right. Let's, um, let's fire away. Yay. And let's zoom in while we're at it. Look at that. Weird stuff. And that's got a shiny kind of finish. So it's not, it's uh, not even on top of a uh, plain wood. And there's no primer on the inside of there, which is kind of odd that they've sprayed inside. Um, yeah. Um, Curious. You can see the shine. Anyway, got some more coming away over there as well. Uh, you can see it flaking off right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for the zooms. Off with the thing. Trouble is, it does that, it kind of pushes it well out of your way. Off. Right, yeah, I mean I'm just, I hope that this is a better adherence because we've no idea where it's done that. Okay, so the first thing, first thing I've noticed, right, and I think this is important for Stuart to notice, I've tightened this up fully and what we've still got is the tail end of the, the tremolo block kicking up. Now that is because these screws are tightened down too far, I can tell from time's gone by. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to str str slacken off the strings a minute um, and we're going to untighten these to allow the plate to sit back down under string loading because right now it's being held under considerable tension by these virtue of these over tightened screws and it's one of the things that you don't know until you know that these screws must not be over tightened. There's a chamfer on the front edge of the plate and uh, it's designed to allow the plate to do this rocking business. Um, the problem is, is if you over tighten it to begin with, um, you, you push it down onto its chamfer, which kicks the back end up and you've locked this end down. And really, it has to sit up like that. To over tighten it, and it goes like that. I could draw on the board, but. So the first thing I'm gonna need to do is to slack these off. And what will happen is the back end will now sit down flat under spring loading. Okay, so a couple of half turns back. Now I slacked the strings off to allow me to get access. I'm going to need to tighten the strings up again because we've got to check the nut slots and we've got to check the neck relief and everything before we get into doing anything else. Okay, so one more on the outside here and then what we'll see is Lo and behold, the tremolo is flat on the deck now, right? That's where the screw should be, backed off a turn or two. Um, you, you might think, well, actually, it might rise up again, 
because we put it back under load. And if, if so, then we still need to tighten the, the um, springs up. But what I can tell you for sure is that the um, that was too too tight over there. So let's start with a, just a, a note. We are pretty much um, tuned up there, and the, the back. Ooh, that's about to snap off. I hate these locking tuners myself. That's now split the string, and I don't think we're. Ever... Oh, okay. Okay, it's dodgy. These tuners, you have to get used to them. Um, if you under tighten them, they'll slip when stretching like that just did. If you over tighten them, they'll crimp too hard and they'll break. They'll increase the risk of breakage. Um, so there is a certain kind of sweet spot that you have to find and you have to find it the hard way unfortunately. I kind of know it by feel but you have to find it for you. Okay, so here we have <coughs> the guitar <coughs> with the hard tailed effectively and this is where we would check the basics of the action so we will check the um, amount of relief in the neck which is just about right um, we would also then uh, aim to set the action downwards to where we would ideally want it and the reason for doing that is we're just going to do this to test the overall condition of the frets now I can see they've been leveled before um, the action here is currently pretty high, so it's, it's a two millimeters. It doesn't have to be that high, and it's the American issue, so we need the American gauge thing, which has gone off wandering somewhere. Where did I put it? Here it is. Is it? Dazzled by chrome. Yeah. So we will just reduce this down in height. We'll, we'll set up with 1.5, 1.2-ish, and then we'll just test drive the frets. I can see they've been flattened, I mean leveled before, um, and I'm hoping that they'll be in fairly good level playing condition. Okay. So it's a bit of a fiddle to begin with. Now I'm going to be changing out the um, bridge saddles in a minute but there's no reason not to do it this way first because yeah right neighbor. Um, actually this isn't badly set all the way across here as it stands. The E is too high but most of them are okay. Um, so you might say well why am I why am I setting up with the original saddles on if I'm going to change them? And the reason is we just need to check the underlying play playability of the frets. And the nut. No. Oh, it's all gone. I've retuned it, so <coughs> because it's hard tailed. It's still in the tuning it was in. Nothing's moving at this end because it's hard tailed. Okay, so that's the guitar set mostly to my kind of playing action. Um, now what I can see at this end is that the slots are higher than I'd want. <coughs> and again, this is independent of doing anything else to the um, to changing the saddles and those kinds of things. We, we're getting this basic stuff done first. So I'm going to choose a 0.4, which is quite a conservative size, 
height and they're all round about the 0.4 which is a little bit over 0.4 so I've got a little bit of leeway and what I would do with this um, and I can see that there's some graphite in here that Stuart's had to load with some pencil stuff and that's because it's gripping and it's affecting the tuning. Now if we're going to use a floating tremolo we've absolutely got to have these nut slots working completely freely. So my feel about this would be, well we start off by checking the, the height, it's just on the mark so we don't really want to lower it much. 0.4 is conservative, I would usually go to 0.3. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the uh, I don't know what the word is, commit sacrilege. I'm going to widen the slot into a bit of a V because I want to free up the, any chance of the gripping of the string and just give it some clearance because what I want is just perfect linear smooth movement <coughs> of that note and it, you get it best when this slot is freed up. Now I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just taking it down to the point where it's just the same height as it was but it's opened up <clears throat> and I recommend you live with that little slot. If you don't like the slot, the, the notch shape, then you can actually take down the remaining material and lower it down so you, you lose the slot, the notch shape, but you actually get, you get the advantages of the very bottom of the slot looking like that with the string in there. Um, and it's, it's really is critical, you don't want a straight walled slot when you're trying to use the tremolo because it will it will be, I can see by the color, discoloration of the slot, I can tell already that it's gripping and that will be um, upsetting normal tuning but it's also going to be upsetting using the tremolo. So the best option is to clear that. And we have a little bit of downward room as well available so we can afford to kind of clear that all the way through without worrying about a tiny drop in the playing action. It's still good but we've cleared it up. So you know some people would would um, freak out at the thought of this but I can tell by the black residue in this thing that the, it's it's basically gripping the string. If it wasn't you wouldn't get this build up. It's either graphite or it's gunge coming off the string. We don't want that to build up. We don't want it to be touching it that hard. So given that my priority is always playing and staying in tune above everything else. Hello spring birds. Um, given my priority is the guitar stays and plays in tune above everything, I'm going to take that down and make sure that it does exactly that. Now we have room, we can take this nut down, reshape it if we want to. I'm not necessarily going to um, because it's not, it's minor, but if you were a stickler about those kind of things, you might do. So I'm going to do the same on this side. Now that one is starting out a fraction lower than everything else anyway. So just we'll double check it. It's barely on the point three, so we don't want to, it's not enough of a this difference to worry about, but we don't want to, and we've got to be very careful not to lower this one any further whilst widening it. Um, just because it's already at its optimum lowest point. I'll leave that as is at that point. Um, this one. Yeah, see these are these are also at the point three. Um, so I have to be a little careful. More careful. So I'm just gonna widen these until I reach just in line with the front of the slot and I know that, that it's cleaned out the detritus and um, it's quite a good guide actually it's quite handy when there is that dirt in the slot I'm widening more than anything else certainly more than lowering as a priority Okay, so the top, the treble strings are truthfully a fraction higher. So given that we've got all these others running at 
three. I think we have to go that way with these others to, to make them even, otherwise it might feel a bit odd. So I'm going to just take these down a fraction more. 0.3 and um, and then I'll be happy with that. The birds outside are giving it a, a right old spring sound. They, uh, it's kind of clear and nice but it's not exactly warm. So like I said the critical thing is some people get obsessed by the way the nut slots look above and beyond their functionality and I have to say what you you really need to get the priority right functionality is what matters with nut slots way above and beyond the look so the way you get it to the right functionality is to cut it down as I'm doing and do it because you'll it'll pay it pay you back by staying in tune so this one is a fair bit higher than the others. So we need to be able to, willing to take off some more material until we get to the right place. Closer. Okay, we're where we want to be. Right. <clears throat> now with this, this thing, sometimes I will round out the slot with the inverted commas correct nut files but actually the more I use this the more <coughs> com comfortable I am that this works as is. <coughs> now let's just do this properly so what we have here is we have the correct first fret action first fret action but we have too much material above the strings here so the next thing I recommend is you get a file <coughs> you get your file and you you remember these are sacrificial strings so we're cool we've got everything else set right we've got the relief right we've got the action right oh let's before we run the risk of breaking strings let's just check <laughs> now, this is set lower than Stuart originally wanted it, and here's a, an issue. <clears throat> if we level it to make these free up those bending notes, <clears throat> it's going to add cost. We haven't agreed that bit. So the question is, how much higher does this ha action have to be in order for this to play those bends without doing any fret work? And it's about there. So, and that is just on 1.5. Um, and it's usually pretty much only applies to the uh, high E, you know, because that's what you're bending, if at all. So in this case, to get this progressed through and um, not to add more cost to it, I'm not going to level. Um, like I say, it would increase the price. And it's on the basis that when Stuart brought this to me, it was it was It was playing, mind you, how much higher has it got to be to get over those bends? There is one point, that's 1.5 and a tiny fraction. That's higher than I'd want to go. <coughs> We're choking out on the G track. Um, now, this could, I don't know what the radius of this guitar is. I didn't check, but if it's a if it's a seven two 
725. I don't think it is, but if it was a 725, then it would, wouldn't surprise me that we're not we're not getting bends on a 1.5 action here. Um, but the question is, is do we add the cost to it and just do it? <coughs> um, and it's all based on you know how often you're likely to bend up. See that's clear of it, and that is technically that's 1.5, 1.75, half a millimeter higher than I would personally go. But for me. It's a, it's a, mm, nah, it's a, a, a judgment call. I mean, all the notes will play, but it's, well, that's clear, but that's because it's that high. If I go back to where I would prefer it, we are dealing in chokes at the highest bins. Too bad. It's a little cluster of high frets here that it's struggling with at the at the preferred, my preferred action, and even in the playing of notes, um, and it's. It's obviously also not letting us bend. Well, we're getting tone bends, but not much above that. I think what we'll do is we'll stick with what we agreed. We'll leave that there, <coughs> knowing that it will choke after one tone at this top end, um, knowing that we've got a, a slight bit of uneven frets here that need taken care of, and that's fairly common. We won't do it now because we haven't agreed it, um, but I know that um, Stuart will probably be back over it in a, in a couple of months' time with a replacement pickup to go in here so why don't we store that up for then and do it at the same time. Um, so back to where we were this is what we'll do now with the old strings on the sacrificial strings on now we get stuck in and we take off any un excess material above these strings. Now what does that mean? Well Everything above where the string is sitting is superfluous and all it does is serves to, in one level, increase the risk of the nut gripping the string um, and at another level <coughs> excuse me, it just serves to make it look ugly because you, you know, if you're using a notch you've got a, a wider looking notch and if you're not using a notch but a slot then it just looks deeper and darker than it needs to do. So. Um, following, I always used to do this, but I used to do it with the strings off. So somebody kindly recommended, said, look, why don't you do it with the strings on? Because they're sacrificial strings anyway. It doesn't matter if you scrape them with the file. So just keep going down until you kind of grind the top of the, the strings and then you're done. And so I can feel it grinding the wound strings there quite nicely. <coughs> 
can see this is a, a nice bone nut shedding shedding its dust and then that's really tidied it up so <coughs> the slots are now the correct height but they're also correct height and width by the way <coughs> so they're running smoothly but there isn't any kind of gross ton of stuff so you don't have extreme V notches and also you don't have extremely deep uh, slots for gunk to build up and for the screen to get caught up in. So this is just a little bit of tidying up with the finer side of the file. Okay, I'm happy with that. We could sand it out further if we were being precise about it. Get a little tool like this and use this end, whatever's left. Need to replace the paper on this, but you know, you can fine tune it with a bit of sandpaper. And if you're really in the mood, you could go even finer and polish it out. <coughs> we could leave that for a minute and do that with another grade. Um, but anyway, so that's that done. Heat is still on. It's now 11 degrees, which is a bit, bit better. So we just slack these off. Um, I did mention to Stuart this morning the, the, a tip I have for putting strings on when you're using the seal like that is broken. Sheared off. Ding. So that wasn't going to work any longer. So I'm pulling the remains of the string out. Um, yeah, a little tip for using the locking tuners. Because if you pull them all the way through and then lock them off with no spare string on the post, it's kind of how they're designed to be used, but <coughs> excuse me, you don't give yourself any option. There comes a time sometimes where you might go, oh, I want to change the saddles or something. You need to get the strings back off. You've only just put them on. If you pull them straight through and crimp them at their shortest point, you won't get them on twice without them breaking. Often you won't get them on once without them breaking if you over tighten them. But um, so this, the trick is to go through to till it's tight and then pull back a fingernail's width, if you like, and let that wind on. Now, the purist will go, ah, but you're not using the, you know, the whole point of the locking tuner is not to have anything on the post. Well, that's fine. But if you do it my way, you then have at least one chance of slacking it off, undoing it, and then tightening it back up. Because the second time you tighten it back up, you can pull right through this time and you pull the crimped piece to the safe outside far side of the post and it's not involved so that the crimped bit is pulled through and out of harm's way <coughs> and you're locking down on a new piece of string so you've had two bites at that cherry see what i mean and i have to tell you as a setter upper i've lost too many sets of strings in the past to not pay attention to that Excuse me, Mr. Morris. There's a good boy. So he has settled on the warm seat. Love him. Okay. Um, other things about this. Yeah, there were things about this <coughs> that had me kind of looking. There's there's some there's some kind of uh, some rolling and scrunching of the fret edges, and the, the way the finish comes up the side here it looks a little bit. I don't know, it looks to me like somebody's worked it. So I don't know, that that and the strange flaking colour, I wonder if this is a refinish of some sort. Anyway, so tidy up your <coughs> top of your nut. There we go. Now we're going to change a couple of things. So the first thing we're going to change is the neck plate. Get the new one ready. It comes with new screws, which we may or may not use because it's already got the holes drilled for these screws so it tends to make more sense to go with that what am i trying to do providing they're the same everything is in the same spacing which it should be so let's check what the torque is on these three not much would it undo with two no Providing the spacing is all exactly the same anyway, use the same screws. 
the wood's already tuned for that, if you like. <coughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is just take these little chappies out for a minute. I'm just going to have a look on the inside of here. <coughs> Coal, Rigo, 2017, April 24th, 2017. Neck Highway 1 Strap and uh, Rosewood Upgrade Mill. What was that? That was my phone. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> okay, so uh, that's interesting. That's all. Looks, looks okay. Yeah, and the highway one strap, line one. And it's got a tilt pad there. Oh, is that just no? It's not a tilt pad, is it? It's just the end of the oh, end of the thingy. Um, April twelfth, twenty seventeen. Well, yeah, nice. I mean, I'm still curious about that paint in there. But anyway, let us let us get this chap back in here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. In you go. <coughs> so we'll go back in with three, three, um, three on the torque. I'm assuming these are all the same position, which looks good. Should be a standard fender. Now we'll be conscious of the positioning. The strat neck is designed to be waggled for final fine tuning. And precise alignment may still need to be done. sitting way high. <clears throat> I mean it's a style preference thing but okay so there's the plate, original plate and some spare, excuse me, spare bits, spare screws. You never know when you might need them. Um, oh, actually we'll put it in a bag with the other bits because <clears throat> next comes these. All right so brass saddles and these are good because they actually come with low profile screws because one of the things that we did we bought in a set of low low uh, low level grub screws to change out now these actually change out from the US to the metric which is also quite good because you don't have to search around for your your what's it key your American style key now getting the saddles off close to the guitar body is something to be very careful of, um, particularly when you're adjusting them, uh, which you know, I just didn't do, I didn't mark the position of the intonation. We could check it again, but I'd like to start as close as possible. <coughs> I'm going to take off as much of the stickiness of this tape as I can. <coughs> Excuse me, to begin with. I'm just going to mark a little point on here where this would have been. <coughs> Intonation point in the middle of there, ladies and gentlemen. And the rest follows suit so in a familiar pattern. So we'll take all of these off. Um, yeah, when you're, when you're doing these up, especially if you've got strings on under any tension, people always say, where you, wherever you're making adjustments with grub screws and bridge saddles, it makes sense to remove or stop them from being under pressure. So at least try and slack the strings off if you can. Um, quality steel with chrome on it like this 
will withstand being pulled, usually, uh, or having the grub screws adjusted up and down under load. Um, cheaper Chinese material or painted, <coughs> excuse me, painted steel or coated steel sometimes dipped painted steel will sometimes uh, cut and cut up and scratch. Um, the other thing to watch out for when you are doing this is that you don't have a lot of clearance between the edge of the guitar and any screwdriver you're using. You certainly can't get a power driver in here. But tempting though it is and boring though it is to sit here turning this by hand, it really is advisable to do that. Um, no matter how slow it is. If you've got a longer one, even better, because you can get a better angle on it. This is a little bit of a shorter one. Um, but the thinner, the better, to avoid any finish damage. But you can see it's boring. It's got a fair bit of dust when you just clean up under there. And then the thing is, it, as you go backwards, this thing kind of wants to push up on the tremolo screw and then it wants to kind of strip the thread if you're not careful. So all of this requires delicacy, which wouldn't be a word that I would usually associate with myself. But <laughs> Right, <clears throat> that's those out. Quick, quick rub down with a cloth. Nice. So then we go into change out mode. These are such uh, these these brass saddles, by the way, are twenty quid, right? For a set of six, that's cheaper than I could find any of the equivalent steel uh, fender ones, and they are considerably better looking. And they, they um, burnish or, you know, age well too. And they look great once they start getting this tarnish. Now, the only thing that you don't know about these things, and you probably won't know until you get a, uh, check the intonation manually, is where exactly the intonation point is. It looks to me like a curve, so it's between, it should be between the two Allen uh, hex screw things. Um, also, keep in mind that you might not need the whole spring length um, so you might find cutting the third spring in the sequence down a little bit helps. Just There's no real need to compress a ton of spring where you don't need to. It's just, it's just making things harder for yourself. So just judging by this, I think I'll cut back on the third one and maybe the fifth and sixth one as well. Nice. Yeah, so I, I'm tempted to upgrade to a set of these brass things. They're from North West Guitars. So on this third one, I mean, I could use a spring from the other set, but I'll keep that intact. So I'm just chopping off a bit because we don't need it all. Ah. Um, So you can, pre you can pretty much reliably preset the intonation pattern. Um, it's, it's predictable. So I think on this one we'll go with the full length and then we'll cut short the other two again. Um, I'll double check, I'll cross check these size of these, these grub screws because I'm pretty sure these are 6mm. There comes a point where if you're, even with the shortest possible grub screws, you, if you find that they're still a bit sticking out, then the only alternative you have is to grind down the grub screws physically, which can, can turn into a bit of a challenge to get them threaded back into the, to the saddle because you mess up the screw start point when you grind them down. Um, or the alternative, if that's not something you want to do, an alternative is you can um, shim the neck slightly or tilt it if you've got the tilt adjuster built in. Um, and that gives you a different 
neck angle, um, which negates the need for the um, uh, it means you can push, you can stand the thing higher up on its legs and remove any scratchy bits. That's what I'm trying to say. But that's a that's more of an extreme thing. The, all, the other thing to keep in mind is when you're setting your position of your um, saddles, eventually, if your bridge is just slightly misplaced, you might find that you you go so far back that the screws in the back of the saddle block push through and start to kind of uh, occlude the through string through hole which can be a bit of a pain and sometimes you have to take these things and shorten them as well um, which again you have to then test feed them so that you can get them to you get the basically you get the, the thread in the saddle to just tidy up the end of the thing by pushing it through and turning it it's a bit it's not ideal and not, unless you've got a complete set of different length things kicking about, which nobody ever has. <clears throat> so I'm just getting these into the sort of standard configuration. And it all looks kind of tidy from there. <coughs> now my, my um, intonation point, who knows, that's a guess to begin with, a guesstimate. Um, if it needs a micro adjusting, we'll do that with the tuner anyway. So there's a set of spare bits, a complete set. I, I tend not to use these so they're not really terribly much use to me but I mean I prefer if I was upgrading something I prefer to put a, a set of brass saddles in. These are the 10.8 millimeters of two different sizes available depending on what your bridge width, width is. Um, <clears throat> if it's uh, if it's 52.5 uh, millimeters, then you want the 10.5 millimeter spacing. If it's 54 millimeters, which this is, you want the 10.8 millimeter spacing. Um, okay, so those are loaded on. Um, we just need to give the neck a bit of a oil, and then we'll get ready to um, load strings, stretch them out. Still as a hard tail, by the way, um, and then we'll go into the setting the trim part of it. Um, yeah, I think I think for the I think the, the decision making on this is we didn't budget for doing a complete fret level <coughs> setup um, because uh, because the action when Stuart originally brought this round was kind of how he was happy with it and it was fairly high and it was clear of kind of any issues um, having said that you know since then at my preferred type of action there's a, a choke out so you can't get a, 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 a tone and a half bend out of the high E which is probably not really something that most a lot of people will use unless you're playing in a band and doing covers and you know you're playing some of those classic numbers where you have to get to that note but um, kind of learning and playing at home for now it's not likely you always need that so you know you might prefer a slightly higher action to get those bends than to you know pay for it in fret metal and time spent leveling it down to there um, do you want to go out boy Out there, um, so so I think we'll go with that as is for now, and then as I say, we'll, I think we'll see this again soon for a pickup change, and we'll switch out, or we'll look at doing that. And then at the same time, if we do that later on, we can also remove these little bits of wear down here, which is where it's been played a fair bit. Now this um this tilt on these pickups is a, a bit more extreme than. I would kind of go for so I'm just reducing that a little bit. Um, uh, also, it takes them a, a little bit away from the strings, so that arguably the tone is the dynamic of the tone is in, improved slightly. <coughs> That's the rule. The, the rule. My um my explodable uh, solvents are making noises. Um, this has been worked on 
I can see there's damage around here on the fingerboard and there are there's a kind of split along the edge here which I don't know if it's ever had to be glued or been glued but um, yeah the edges have been messed with well, but I'm not surprised because the frets have been leveled at some point they, they don't look like they've been re-crowned but they've been leveled okay so we're ready to load up we've got the plate on we've got uh, we're set to hard tail at the moment we've got our strange flaky electrix cavity um, tram cavity we've got new saddles on ready to go they're a sort of random height but we'll adjust that in a minute time for our new strings so we go with a uh, this is the hybrid custom gauge so I'll put that down at the end Hello. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just putting on my strings. Look at this interesting thing. Flaking paint. Oh, yeah. Look. Flaking paint, right? Mm. Um, oops. flaking paint. And if you look underneath the paint, it's shiny, like it's been finished in clear or some oh. sort of clear. But it's not. It's not like a. It's not a typical primer that you would see. Can you see the shininess? Yeah. It's not like a primer that you'd expect if... So has it been oiled? Or has the oil sunk in maybe? I don't, I don't know, but it's shiny. So they've, they've sprayed the colour on top of a shiny mm. layer, which is an no, odd... not surprising that it's taking off. Well, though. it's not bonded very well, whatever it is, and it's an odd combination of things. But. Oh well. This is Stuart's. Stuart's, yeah. I've, I've got... Yeah, I've got curiosities about this guitar. Yeah man. I have curiosities about this guitar. I think they just don't finish them off properly anymore. Because <laughs> that's that that's every fender that's been through our house lately. Shh, don't say that. Fender will get upset. But Mr. Fender, Mr. Leo, who designed but, it right from the outset. But isn't think. that true? Though? Well there's there's been a few They're, different pro they haven't problems. Been the finish is is what sticks well, in my Well, the finish mind. on the neck of one of them was terrible and it came off while I was... Well, sorry, I'm trying to look at, look at you and talk. Oh, yeah, I'm oh. um, Yeah, they... Didn't realise. What? I had the thing going. The, oh, the thing, yes. Sorry, the thing. Yeah, you know, you've, you've slandered Fender now. Oops. I'm afraid that's it. It misses really. I, I, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They say. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that, yeah, that neck that I did and the, and the coat, f <laughs> the clear finish just came off in handfuls on the on the fingerboard, M meaning I had to do a complete refinish, which was fun. Anyway, yeah, I'm just I'm curious about this arrangement because I've never seen this finish, this funny, shiny underlying stuff before. I've, I mean, they don't normally finish inside the. No, uh, the, that, that's uh, what I was going to say. Who knows? Is, who knows? I suppose anyway. it depends on who makes it, doesn't it? Really? This is Fender USSA. SSSA. Have you let him out? Yeah. It's okay. I opened the door, and in fact, they spent and sat by the door with it open. Okay. Right, right. Just chew oh, well, enjoy the right. mission now. So, um, cat food mission. Yeah, everything now. Um, so. Uh, I'm going now. Okay, so. goodbye. <laughs> Safe trip. Okay. See you when you're back. We're just listen out the door now. That was oh, just. Uh, coming to the door. Oh, 1.30. You've got to put yes. your back by 1.30. Yeah, I will. Um, huh? yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got an Amazon uh, thing being delivered. It's only earplugs. I think I've found some s really soft ones. Yeah. Uh, don't get too excited. So they might post them through the door. But they might. Or well, they might ding dong because I can hear it. I can hear it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, ma'am. All right, love. So there was the pullback one finger's worth, one finger of tequila's worth. Um, yeah, just a little centimeter and then I don't grip too hard. 
it's a, like I say, you've got to experiment and get the right feel of your, you know, that works for you. Because if I do it too hard, I know I will break a string. It'll crimp it and it'll weaken it, and it eventually it'll just unravel when I least need it. Um, so I'm just doing a string's worth, fingers worth back, and X amount of tightening. I mean, it, you'd be surprised. You'd think, well, you can't over tighten it with your human fingers, but you can. You can just crimp the strings and then just weaken from that point onwards and it's you're on a loser okay so always check that you're up through the block before you tighten it because it's not the worst thing in the world because if you don't get it right and it pops up you've got more and you can push the string through um, and, and the, any or any initial crimp will be out on the other side anyway so you get away with that but um, it's just these little dopey things that you have to keep in mind so, but it, it, it making sure it's pulled through to begin with is always better than it bashing its way through when you least expect it because it will burst out kind of slightly explosively okay so we've got hybrids here and, and a replacement nine on the high E <sighs> okay so there's all my strings loaded. I'm going to cut them short now just to keep it tidy. And um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to tighten, you know, reel them in, whatever the word is, tighten them up. Um, stretch them out and then do the, uh, then, then I'm going to drop the action by half a millimeter all the way across and then I'm going to um, do the tremolo setting um, at which point you'll see that the action will return to what it needs to be um, right so I'm just getting these on and secured first Like I say, purists will go, oh look, you've got some string wrapped around your post. That negates the whole point of having the locking tuners. And I'd say, yes, but come on. I mean, you want a second bite at this if you need to take strings off and adjust something, then you've got it. But if you don't want that, then just go ahead and stick it all the way through and do the thing. Okay, so first check is alignment of the neck as put back on and I'm happy with that. It's pretty much equal with maybe half a millimeter more on the treble side, which is what you'd ideally want. If there's any dis discrepancy, you'd want a little bit more room on the treble side for your vibrato and stuff. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is give these strings all a sort of solid tug and that gets the beds, make sure they're sort of seated in and if they're not, you'll, they'll come out and ping out and you'll know you've got a problem. Um, so just kind of, I like to seat them first and then we, now don't forget the action here is going to be all over the place because it's as installed. So the first thing we can do is get one of these little things and we're going to set the action back at what we know will work for the underlying frets, right? So we know that it isn't necessarily as low as I'd like it, but it's not the end of the world. So I'm going to go to, um, going to go to where we want to be. Now the thing is, we've still got a little bit of stick out here. So I'm going to, stupidly, I didn't double check the actual length of these. Let's pull one out and just, just do it. They're all the same length. So let's just do a quick physical check on one of these because if we may be in that situation where there's nothing else we can do and it, it is what it is. So if it's six mil, ah, these are bigger. So we will put the other ones into use. These are too big, right? These are eight. So we don't need eight, we need six. Ah, so we will. Did I buy the US version? Do you know what? I think I bought the US version. Oh, you 
plonker. And they won't they won't work in this, will they? Will they? Will they? Oh well they might do, but they might be still a US sized key. Oh well I yeah, I think I've I've condemned us to a US fitting, but I think we've got the same size thread. <laughs> uh, no we don't. Oh uh, plonker. That would have worked. Oh, I, oh well. We're back where, not back where we started, but we're we're not quite where I wanted to be. I, the re, uh, okay, that was my oversight. Originally, we were buying direct American. I was, I'd, I'd ordered, of course, I ordered American Strat replacement saddles and Andertons sold them to me, complete, you know, completed the order, and then they just didn't arrive. And I looked, went back and I looked at it, and it said, um, or I rang them, and they said, oh no, what does it say on the website? I said, well, apparently you've got, he said, no, they're not in. And I said, well, it says they're ready to order, uh, no, is it ready to purchase, or something like that. And, um, and, and it turns out that, that means they're not actually in, but they will be in when Fender America finally sends them. And guess what? They wouldn't send them till the end of February, so that was no good. So I quit out of that. Problem being then is we ordered these instead because otherwise we wouldn't have any decent because we couldn't get the Fender um, saddles for level money. And the problem is that that then meant that um, that then meant these came with the metric things, not the USA. And I'd already bought the six millimeter grub screws for the US doofer. You get what I'm saying. So now we've got mismatched things. Now the only ones that are gonna be in the way are the, the high and low E. The rest of them are pretty nicely sunken. So it's only one of the pair that's really out of order. And um, you never know, I might have a spare one knocking about in a box somewhere that just about does the trick um, or Arguably, we could take this here one and um, we could file down the end ones. <coughs> it's annoying. I'm annoyed. I tell you, I'm annoyed. Just, uh, yeah, I just missed that bit. I forgot it. I forgot it. These are so darned fiddly. Oh, what? That is loose. That is a loose hex fitting. Right, let's see where we are. Too low on that end. Oh, why not? Hmm. Yeah, too low. Too low. So this one will be at the right sort of height for no scratchio. That is 1.5, 1.75, that's okay. Then we can pretty much do the same for the next one. That's too low. Actually, so these are all better. It's just slightly uneven over on the base side and doesn't work out quite the same way. So that's 1.5, a little bit more. This one's going to come up too. A loose fitting or what? One point. I'll sort of get there in a minute. Okay, now that is two millimeters. A little, a little higher than I would like. Drop it down half a turn. This next one is one point six 
0.65. Close to being right. This next one is right. And that one is high. Come on, little leggies, line up properly. Right, let's leave that there for a minute. And let's do a quick bit of stretch alizing. the sound of the string pinging against the string tree there. So I'm stretching these mostly between thing, thing, string, thumb and forefinger. Now as you're tuning up at this point, you're listening and feeling for smooth movement of the strings through the slots. All the strings at that point move smoothly through the slots. Then you're pretty confident, you can be pretty sure that it's going to um, stay in tune when you use the tremolo. That's, uh, that's why it's good having it locked down for setting the action because you're, you're just taking out one of the biggest variables. If you have the tremolo loose while you're trying to do this other setup work, it'll confuse you because you won't know what's, which bit's staying in tune and which bit isn't. stretch through on the thumb and four fingers, get rid of any further slack I possibly can. And then we should get closer to stability on the tuning side and then we're into um, taking care of the tremolo set setting which we'll use the standard method which is pretty straightforward. Um, we also will probably need to add something else to that tremolo arm. So we're getting close to stable tuning, which is good in non-tremolo mode. Now that microscopic thing getting in the way there but let's just let's just make sure I don't know why that would be pinging like that but I think it I have a horrible feeling it's the it's the metal when you bend it's moving it's pinging on the string tree I think
you can hear those strings running into the slight problem with those high frets that we will consider taking care of on another at another time um, if that's important to Stuart and that's that's I'm not going to make the assumption that that is because it's you know it's 30 quid more time and cost so it's you know important not to assume um, so we've got this PTFE tape on here that's very thin um, and it's fallen apart as it does when you you use it for this and the reason that's been put on there is because um, when this is in it's still got a bit of rattle to it which is really annoying which is why I like some of the, the vintage vintage Wilkinson ones um, but you know what it's not it's not actually there's not actually that much movement let's let's not start by assu assuming it needs it um, okay so let's say we've stabilized the tuning now we, we've slack slackened stretched out the slackened strings we know the nut slots are good we've got the action pretty much where we want it now remember the thing I said is we're going to take down the action by half a millimeter before we start doing tremolo things now we know that that won't play cleanly we might get buzzes and fret slap and whatever but that's not the point so what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to do a whole turn back on each of these and that fell out of there this is such a these are slightly odd these things they're they're a they're loose slightly, slightly bigger than this X key wants to be. Oh, right, I'm going to do it this way around. So, as you can see, I'm just taking everything down a whole turn. So, we it actually equates to half a millimeter. I've done this before, so at this setting, anyway. Now, the reason you have to do this before you. Um, set your tremolo is because bizarrely if you do it afterwards what happens is you, you can get the you can do the setup for the tremolo you get the perfect range of float and movement back for the notes upwards but it's raised your action because the act of tilting the plate forward lifts forward the action on here raises it up so then you go oh okay I want to reduce my action so you reduce it but by reducing lowering the saddles you change the tension of the string over the saddles which detunes it which lightens the load which changes the spring and by the time you've evened it all out you suddenly find that your plate is back on the floor which is defeats the kind of object and it took me a while to work out that, that was what was missing from the Galeazzo Fridua method although I love how he shows how to get the right range of um, tones. So what we need for this is a fairly simple process but we need a tuna, a tuna matata, uh, we need our trusty cork tuna and we turn it on and what we're going to do is we're going to start off by just taking a look at this. You want to start with the plate on your tremolo perpendicular to the body. Now at the moment, believe it or not, because of the way the front is slightly canted or beveled, the plate is now sitting slightly back, which is, is how it should. And there is about, that was a ping, that was interesting, and I think that came from the string tree. Um, there is a little bit of forward movement required to get this perfectly parallel to the body. So I'm just going to pick a little number of, a small number of post-it notes and that are enough to hold it up just to the point where it's perpendicular, parallel, perpendicular, level to, <laughs> right, and there it is, right, and that's my start point. So my start point is I'm going to tune this to pitch, tune everything to pitch. Now because the springs are still really tight, it's acting as a hardtail still. Don't worry, that's just making the spring, uh, the screws rattle a minute. I'll take care of that. So I'll just go back through and tune it again one more time. So we're tuning, we've, we've leveled the base plate now. We're just tuning to pitch with the base plate right there. Now 
So then we do an interesting thing. We've got the guitar in tune. Now we detune it with the tremolo arm down to the point where this G becomes an E. Wherever it is, about there. And what we do is we put in enough post-it notes to keep it there at an E. E flat, too many. Take a few out. Try it again. F too few. Just sharp of E. Add one more sheet, you get the idea. It's a really cute little method and what we're doing is we're pre-programming now the range of pitch bend which is a tone and a half on this G. Bing on the E. Now what you do, which is weird, is you tune it to pitch. Come on. So now we are canted up and we're, we're getting this now tuned to pitch. So this in a way is a copy now of how this thing will, will stand when we've got it floating in the right position. But you know we're not floating, right? We're propped. There's our guitar, and funnily enough, the position that this is propped up by these post-it notes is now exactly where we expect to see it float when it's perfectly floating and the thing is correctly tuned. But how do we get it to there? Well, this is what this preparation has done. We now take this away, and guess what happens? It goes really sharp. Here's the miracle. You get your screwy driver with your big bit in the end, and now we unscrew our previously tightened up claw and we keep unscrewing it, both claws equal amount and we're slackening the pull on the strings and so we're now causing slowly causing the plate to now raise up and guess where it's going to stop when it when that G string is back in tune guess what it'll be floating at the position we had it a minute ago B flat, still too sharp. Now this is a very difficult point to do this and keep it, we're not in the right angle so there's always going to be some scuffing. You literally cannot get a screwdriver over these stupid claws. It's the only thing Leo did wrong in this design. A we could try all manner of different screwdrivers and I promise you that none of them actually get any easier because you're still riding over the top. I mean you can get a bit closer but you're still riding over the top of the claw. They should have put the claw screws in a different angle but hey. Down to A, so we're coming down towards G as you can see more turns and we're doing them a roughly an equal amount on either side so it looks tidy-ish when we get down to where we want to get to and then we get down to still sharp of G quite a bit and now I don't you won't be able to see it but when you're doing this yourself you'll see now you've got the tail is now kicked up a little bit we're still in the G sharp region and before you know it, we'll be on G, coming close to G, and everything will be in our correct position. Still sharp of G. See that? Coming down towards G right now. 
couple more turns and we'll be on the, on the mark. Probably just flat now. Spot on G. Okay, and I'm hoping <laughs> that we should now be approximately at our correct height. Yes, we are. There may be slight adjustment between any of these, but you know, we're pretty much where we want to be. The only thing I'm just cautious about right now is a couple of these are um, slightly loose, and so we don't want them rattling. Um, just double checking that they're all uh, pressing against the metal, because there's no point having them spinning and buzzing, because that's really annoying. Okay, so I think we're pretty much there. And fine tune. Look at that, on the E. We got back to E. But what's really good about this method is, listen for the amount, right? We want a tone on the E. Sorry, um, half a tone. There you go. We want a whole tone on the B. And a tone and a half on the G. The full extent of your bend. And then we got E. Fine tune it. clunk in there that I can see previous owners not liking and the only other way around it is to you, know, you can come around a couple more times and it'll reduce it not bad actually there we go so that's the guitar set in floating tremolo mode um, with my extra special Sam flavored accommodation to get the playing action back to where you want. So you can think of it as half a millimeter or a complete turn of the typical screw, grub screw, is the amount you want to set it down before you do the tremolo setting and that just about gets to where you want to be. Um, none of the methods I've ever tried accommodates that except Galeazzo Frodua's method plus my little adjustment for the change in in, um, in action and, and funny enough I found that the hard way because I would I would set it according to Galeazzo Frodua get it all perfect it would be brilliant and then I would go oh the action's a bit high so I tweak it and then suddenly before long I would find myself all tweaked out and the whole thing would be oh hang on it's back on the deck you know, it's the tail end is touched back down. I've lost the range of movement. Why is that? And that's because you're you can't lower those saddles without changing the string tension. And um, changing the tension, of course, changes the pitch, and and the rest is history. Um, or changes the you know when you lower it, changes the force, and then that force changes the pull on the springs, and things move in different directions. So it's all it's all a, a weird interrelated set of variables, but that little extra bit with the half a mil down is the secret, the mystery secret. Now um, this was done up to three on the Richter scale. I'm just going to hand turn a sort of eighth of a turn more. It's my kind of manual torque wrench. Um, just adds that little bit of locking force. Um, again, it's by ear, eye. Um, there we have it. Look forward to these getting nice and tarnished soon. Interesting in how, I'm interested in how um, this one uh, has more spring 
sticking up. I mean, there, there, there isn't. Could it possibly be there's a different height of saddle somewhere in here? Let's see if I've got a six millimeter one kicking around somewhere. Huh. Mm. A non a non imperial, you know, as in UK tastic one. Stay there. Stay there. Somewhere in my box, I may have a very small thing. <laughs> Grub screws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got something with grub screws in it somewhere. It could be this one. Well, it has a lot. Uh, mm. Spot the short one if you can. No, I can't. Oh god, they're everywhere. Um, oh, but wait, but wait, there is there is our two shorties. This is a six millimeter shorty. No, that's still eight. My god, how can eight look shorter than um, confused? I guess it must be ten, must be the regular size then. Yeah, those, those six ones are quite a bit. Yeah, they're all eights. Never mind. I thought I, I thought I saw a six millimeter one in the imperial scale, but we don't. We've only got eights or longer, which is a right pain. There's no luck in that department of grub screws. There might be some kicking around somewhere far away, but. I don't think there are any in here. Grub screws, anyone? Grub screws, grub screws, in. Washers, nuts, 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 strap saddles. Yeah. Yeah. Chinese roller strap saddles. You never know. Something on an existing set might have something. Hmm. Or might not. No. Uh, Chinese roller saddles. Oops, there goes one. Anyway, lucky I didn't need it. Um, now that, wait a minute, that's pretty short, isn't it? I think it's black though, that's a slight problem. I bet you it is longer than six when it comes down to it. Yeah, it's looking, it's looking like an eight as well, for what it's worth. Black anyway. Chinese horrible roller saddles. Never used those, they're probably a good idea, but it just never came to the right the right time. Um one, two, three, four, five, six, plus some springs. And some of those as well. Okay, well, that's a no on the six mil. It's just that one standing taller. And I'm pretty sure that it, it can't actually be different lengths. And without actually pulling them out, I won't know. So, oh, you know what? That temperature has dropped off really quickly. Um, I mean, there's a way of telling, I suppose we could take one of these out and compare it. No, you know what? The brain says that and that are the same height, aren't they? Of course they are, there's no point taking those out. It's just that one's quite a bit lower. That saddle is sitting quite a bit lower than the other one, that's why it's just poking up. But you know what, it isn't bad at all. All done. That's the point. Um, I've got a spare black screw that I had to find another one for, for some tuners yesterday because I lost that one and it's now reappeared. How that happens, I don't rightly know. Okay, spare, spare things, spare things in the bag, taped up things. Okay, so that's a strat done. 
I'm going to be moving on swiftly to uh, Adam's next custom build, which is waiting to get finished, and that's what I'm doing today and tonight and tomorrow. Uh, what we're done here, this can go inside ready for Stuart. Oh, um, I don't think we need to do anything. Where's it gone? All right, come on. I don't think we need to add any tape to this. I think it works adequately. It just needs to be in at the right place. Um, but if it isn't good enough, a bit of PTFE tape works. That's not bad. I'm happy with that. Uh, let's put back on the strap locks and strap. Come on. Not the easiest things in the world to fit. Actually, they're not very effective these days. I hate to say it. I've found that they perish too quickly and split and so on and so forth. They're better than nothing, but and I don't know if the Fender ones have a better quality, but I seem to have had various kinds and they all seem to wear out at some point, so I'm not totally thrilled. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Return to pitch as well. That's good to hear. Um, so don't let anyone tell you that a strat will not work with a floating tremolo. It will. You have to get two things right. First being the nut slots and the second is getting all the slack out of the strings. Um, and then it'll play beautifully. Okay, and that's that done. Thanks for watching.